today we are going to discuss about example on theories of failure part 5 and this is the problem we are going to solve in this video so welcome to my youtube channel mechanical engineering management so let's take the description first a cylindrical bar 50 mm diameter and 250 mm long is fixed at one end and keep in mind that for the design of machine component or design of machine elements a description is so much important so try to understand each and every sentence and imagine the 3d figure of the given description in your mind so that you can realize exactly the design problem and that will be very much helpful to solve the real problem at the free end it is loaded by axial pull load of 12 kN and a downward transverse load of 5 kN it is also subjected to a torque of 1.5 kN meter. Calculate first maximum principal stress, second minimum principal stress and third maximum shear stress. So first try to understand the given description with the help of the figure and that is very much important. That's why I am going to show you each and every time the figure so that you can realize exactly the situation as per the description. 50 mm diameter so this is the 50 mm diameter cylindrical bar 250 mm long so is fixed at one end so here you can see supported at one end and that is fixed and another end is free at the free end it is loaded by axial pull load of 12 kN and you know that axial load that means on the axis of the road and that you can see over here Means this is the line of action of force that is exactly on the axis of this road and here look at this word pull road that means tensile load and that is given to you as 12 kN and a downward transverse load of 5 kN and that downward transverse load that is at the free end the 5 kN it is given to you as downward direction so that arrow is in this direction and transverse load that is always perpendicular to the axis of the road it is also subjected to a torque of 1.4 kN meter so that is also mentioned over here calculate maximum principal stress that means sigma 1 sometimes it is called as a major principal stress minimum principal stress that means sigma 2 Sometimes it is called as the minor principal stress, maximum shear stress that is tau max. This figure is only to understand the situation. It is not required to draw in the examination, but instead of that, you can draw the 2D figure like this. So, this is the cylindrical rule that is subjected to axial pull, transverse load, and torque. So, first write down the given data. Cylindrical bar 50 mm diameter that is mentioned over here. 250 mm long that is also shown in the figure. Axial pull load of 12 kN. And here you can see this is the pull that means tensile load. So I can say it is Ft and a downward transverse load. So I can say it is Fb because of due to that load, this road will be bent. So you can understand. This load is responsible to create the bending stress in the road. It is also subjected to a torque. So I can write over here torque T is 1.4 kN into meter. Maximum principal stress that means sigma 1 is equal to question mark. Minimum principal stress that means sigma 2 is equal to question mark. Maximum shear stress that means tau max is equal to question mark. It is really very important problem to understand the concept of the design. So concentrate in the whole video so that automatically you will understand the whole description and you will be able to solve the same problem in the examination. As you know that stress is equal to load upon area. And this is the Ft an area that is always perpendicular to the action of this force that means normal cross-sectional area so I am going to find first the area and you know that for the circular cross-section it is pi by 4 d square so diameter is given to you if you simplify this then you will get 
area that is 1963.5 mm square now i can put it over here so ft that is 12 kilo newton so we have to convert it into newton by multiplying simply 10 raised to 3 area that is this one so if you simplify then you will get sigma t and that is 6.11 newton per mm square now you know that this force that is responsible to create the bending moment. So first I am going to find the bending moment and you know that bending moment is equal to force into distance and this distance is always perpendicular distance. So now I can put the value Fb that is given to you 5 kN. kN that's why it is multiplied by 10 raised to 3 and you know that this distance is always perpendicular distance from this force and that is 250 mm. So if you simplify then you will get bending moment 1.25 into 10 is to 6 newton into mm. So once you got that bending moment then I can use the fundamental equation of bending moment and that is m by i is equal to sigma by y. But here you don't know the moment of inertia i. So first I am going to find the moment of inertia i. And you know that for the circular cross section, moment of inertia I is pi by 64 d raised to 4. Put the value d as 50 and simplify, then you will get 0 0.307 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. Now I can use this moment of inertia over here. So bending moment that already you have 1.25 into 10 raised to 6 upon moment of inertia. That is this one is equal to sigma b by y. Sigma b is the bending stress that is my objective. y that is the distance of the extreme fiber from the neutral axis. And from the figure it is 25. So if you simplify this equation then you will get sigma b bending stress. That is 101.79 newton per mm square. So up to here I have used this force. I have used this force also. Now I am going to consider this torque. So you know that fundamental equation of the twisting moment T by J is equal to tau by R. But first we have to find the polar moment of inertia J. And you know that J for the circular cross section pi by 32 D raised to 4. And D you know that 50. So I can put it over here. Simplify it. Then you will get polar moment of inertia 0.614 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. Now I can put this value in this equation. So T that is a twisting moment that is given to you 1.4 kilo newton. So you have to multiply it by 10 raised to 3 meter. So one second you have to multiply it by 10 raised to 3. Then you will get torque in newton into mm. So it is 1.4 into 10 raised to 3 into 10 raised to 3 upon j that is this one is equal to tau as it is divided by r that means the radius and that is 25. So if you simplify then you will get tau that is 57 newton per mm square. So up to here I got sigma t with the help of this force and sigma b with the help of this force then shear stress tau is with the help of this torque. How I can use these all stresses to find the sigma x for the major principal stress. So try to understand this figure that due to that force the stress produced in this direction that is in x direction and this sigma b that is the bending stress and you know that due to the bending these both stresses are actually in the direction of x. So now you can understand from this figure that your total stress in the direction of x that is sigma t plus sigma b because of that bending stress that is also produced in the direction of x that is represented as net stress in the direction of x axis. So now I can put the value sigma t that is 6.11 plus sigma b that is 101.79 so that I will get 107.9 Newton per mm square 
and that will be the net stress in the x direction that is due to the tensile force and due to the bending force. So now I can find the maximum principal stress. Here sigma y is 0 because of no load that is acting in the y direction. So if you simplify then I will get sigma 1. Now already we have discussed in earlier slide the net resultant stress in the x direction that is 107.9 Newton per mm square and shear stress tau 57 Newton per mm square. So now I can put these both values in this equation. So here sigma x that is 107.9 by 2 plus shear stress tau 57. I have intentionally used the different colors so that you can understand the value corresponding to sigma x and tau. So simplify this term then I will get this one. Simplification of this term then you will get 2910.6 plus 57 square then you will get this one and simplify now the whole term then you will get sigma 1 132.43 newton per mm square and this is your first answer maximum principal stress so make a box now you know that for the minor principal stress only the sign changes over here instead of plus now it is minus for the minimum principal stress. So don't waste the time to show this all calculation but only you can start from here instead of plus you can put the minus sign. So this is my earlier slide. Now I am going to put instead of plus minus sign for the minimum principal stress. So sigma 2 is equal to this is same but now it is minus sign instead of plus. Everything is same. So now if you simplify this then you will get sigma 2 that means the minor principal stress or you can say minimum principal stress. So this is your second answer so make a box. Now third one that is the maximum shear stress. This is your given description. So, so far we got the value of maximum principal stress and minimum principal stress. Maximum shear stress that means tau max. So we have sigma 1 and sigma 2 and you know that maximum shear stress tau max is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. So now I can put these both values over here. So sigma 1 that is this one minus as it is sigma 2 that is minus 24.53 by 2. So you know that minus minus plus and now you can simplify and so that you will get shear stress maximum that is 78.48 Newton per mm square and this is your third answer maximum shear stress. So make a box. So thanks my dear friends press the like button to appreciate this video.